Guys, buck up in far north Queensland for take 32 of this clip. Thanks to the dog, two doors down. Old Tanza. He goes, Buck's just turned the camera on. I'm going to start barking. I'm going to keep push on. If he starts barking, he can keep barking. I keep forgetting that there's a lot of people on my new channel that did not see my old channel. And someone asked me the other day, they said, Buck, what kind of dual battery system have you got in the BT50? Now, I've done a few clips on this in the past on my old channel, which doesn't exist anymore. And I keep forgetting that there is new people out there. So it might be time to just start redoing some of my old clips so that some of the new people to the new channel know what I run out camping. And speaking of camping, we're getting close, guys. What is it today? Is it the 29th or the 1st of March? We're almost in March, okay? Summer's over. We've got another few weeks of hot weather up here and then hopefully we're getting close to camping weather. And I'm going to camp the shit out of everything this year. I'm going to really get out as much as I can in both the BT50 by itself and also with the camper trailer hook behind. Camping in different scenarios. So I'm really looking forward to that. Too much sitting around the house. Got to start getting out. But in summer up here, it's just too hot to go camping, everyone. I'm going to do a quick clip today and show you my dual battery setup. I've made some little, few little changes to it, for, even for the old people out there that have seen it before. I run what I would call a portable system. I run a portable system, it means it's not a permanent installation like you get in some four-wheel drives. Something flew into my eye. I run a portable system and I keep harping on about it. I like to be able to have a battery pack in the back there that I can take out A, if you want to use it somewhere else and make a, a separate kitchen or something when you're out camping you've got a power source there to run some lights and all that type of stuff not that I do that a lot because I I have a second battery box in the shed okay and I tech well battery box in the shed a little bit different to this one uh, but it works really well in the shed for doing all stuff I've got it set up for solar only not haven't got a DC to DC charger on the one in the shed but this one I have all high tech well gear, you'll see that soon. Especially after cyclones, if we lose power on that, it's good to be able to take a battery box out of the uh, out of the BT50 and take the fridge out, take it inside so we can keep our milk and, and some drinking water cold if we lose power for a couple of weeks after a cyclone. I, I keep harping on about that, and it's it is. It's you, you've got to you've got to have some way to keep your milk and your your water cold because we've had two big cyclones here since I've been here and both times it was like two to three weeks without power. So cold milk and cold water bloody comes in handy and, and you can do that if you've got a portable system. I adopt the KISS principle, keep it simple stupid. Now there's a lot of people out there with permanent installations, they've got canopies in the back of their four -wheel, on the back of their four-wheel drives with permanent installations, absolutely fantastic. This here, I can take it out if I want. If I want to use the BT50 and make a bit more space in there, it takes me literally 10 minutes, if that, to take the battery box out, take the angle fridge out, and I've got a lot more room in the back of the BT50 if I want to throw stuff in or whatever, you know, want to bloody go to the dump or do things like that. So I've got the capability to do that. And I can set it up somewhere else. Want to set a gazebo up when I'm out camping, take the angle fridge out of the car and the battery box, and set the kitchen up under a 3x3 three three gazebo, I can do that. So I've, it's it's flexible, and that's the way I like it. I've had this system in here for a long time now, guys, and it works really, really well. I'm really happy with it. The only thing, the only tweaks I've made to it just recently is I felt the wires the other day, the wire coming from the starter battery back into the tub, and it was hot. And I, it's the same one I've been running for years, the cable here, and with a 40 amp DC charger, this cable was getting really hot. Turns out the wire wasn't thick enough. So I went to the Auto Elect the other day, and this has started World War III. Uh, I got him to run a thicker cable from the starter battery into the tub, fuse it up and everything, I'll show you soon. And uh, that, that ended up costing me almost 500 bucks to get that done. It's no, nothing's cheap now, is it? It's bullshit. I wish I knew how to do stuff myself. I can put an Anderson plug on, but when it comes to putting midi fuses and all that in, 
uh, that that's a bit beyond me guys I don't have the expertise to do that so I have to use the a proper auto elect to do that he did a fantastic job by the way I thought he was a bit overpriced but he did a very good job and I'm very happy with what he's done so what I'll do now have a few more sips on my beer and uh, I'll show you the dual battery system and some exciting news at the at the end of it if you're after some iTech world stuff anything from iTech World over in Western Australia, itechworld.com.au. I thought I'd forgotten all about it. They said, Buck, your bloody discount code's still active. It's not Mr. Buck 10 anymore, it's Mr. Buck 05, 5% off. It's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, isn't it? Now, listen, a lot of influencers out there that have got discount codes and, and you get a discount and then they get a bit of a kickback. I don't get a kickback from it, guys. Uh, Money wise, this is just to save you a few bucks, all right? Uh, they gave that to me years ago and a lot of people cashed in on it. it was Mr. Buck 10 back then. So anything you want out of the iTech World store, whether it's a lithium battery, battery box, the JS80 jumper starter, which is a great bit of kit. That'll probably be my next clip. Uh, they got some good gear in there and uh, they'll give you 5% off the, uh, the price that's going on the internet at the time. Use Mr. Buck 05 and they'll give you another 5% on top of that. So, hey, it's better than nothing, eh? Uh, so, thanks to iTech World for that. Now, one of the big problems when your fridge isn't working, and, and I've heard this from so many blokes I used to work with, my fridge was playing up when I was out camping. The wire coming back wasn't thick enough, guys. So, the wire to run your actual fridge off the battery doesn't need to be uh, quite big, but this here gives you a bit of an example. This is the size of the wire that he's run back down now, and it's 8AWG, American Wire Gauge, but he called it 6BNC, not BN, not Bravo November Charlie, B and C, and it's not 6 mil. 6 B and C doesn't mean it's 6 mil. It's a lot thicker than that. But he said basically the, the thickness should be, if that's your little Anderson plug connector there, the thickness of the wire should go just fit just fit in to the end of the uh, Anderson plug connector like that okay if the wires you've got to put a lot more solder around the outside and that the wires probably too thin okay especially when you're running a 40 amp DC charger there which I'm going to talk you through there so I hope you can see that the wire should be just thick enough to go in with not too much gap around it that's an 8 AWG 8 AWG the auto elect the other day, he was referring it to as 6 B and C, different. So it's not 6 mil, it's 6 B and C. So I don't know what mil that would be, but it's certainly bigger than 6 mil, okay? So, yeah, so that's a good way to gauge it. Your wire running from your starter battery into the tub of your four-wheel drive um, should be just thick enough, just thin enough to go inside an Anderson connector like that. So that's a good, nice, thick wire and it's not going to overheat carrying the current down to the back. If your cable, if you feel your cable and it's getting hot or it's starting to get really warm, it means your wire's not thick enough, okay? And uh, it's caused a lot of problems with not having enough amps coming down the wire and all that, and, and even if it does carry it, it, get, it overheats and that's what you don't want. So I'll show you now. Got a nice big thick cable put in down the back so it shouldn't have any more problems with the, the wire getting warm. Righto. I'll get in and I'll show you the wiring that cost me nearly 500 bucks and uh, give you a bit of an idea there and then we'll talk over my dual battery system which is a portable system. So this is the wire that he's done up here, this one here, which runs down to the tub of the BT50, okay, to provide power to the DC charger, the alternator via the starter battery in there. And what he's done there is he's fused it up. This is something I didn't know how to do. Fused it up with a 60 amp MIDI fuse, okay? They, they recommend don't use blade fuses. Use a MIDI fuse, which we've got here. And she runs all the way down the back and I'll show you where it comes out. So this is the cable that comes out from the starter battery. This is the old one that was in there, guys. Look how thin the wire is, okay? And it was getting really warm. And I had that running for years, and I felt it the other day, and it was it was really warm. So he's run a lot thicker cable down there now. And basically, this is my dual battery system here. 
tons are. I'm going to go and pull his tail off in a minute if he keeps barking. So as you can see there, I've got the angle, 40 litre angle fridge on the fridge slide. I'll show you from the other side soon. And there's the iTech World battery box, everyone. Fridge has just kicked in, starting to cycle now. iTech World battery box, inside there is a 120 amp hour iTech World lithium battery, a 120X. Inside that battery, I like these battery boxes. Got an isolator switch there. Got a display here. Be careful of the percentage, guys. That's more for AGM batteries and that. Okay, lithiums will keep their voltage. And um, I've flattened this twice now <laughs> since I've had it in a couple of years. So you've got to keep your eye on the ball. Isolator switch. And the good thing here, USB, you've got a USB-C there and you've got a quick charge USB-A there. Those quick charges, the 3.0s, they charge up quicker than what it does, like my phone and cameras and that, charge up quicker on this than inside the house. Another couple of quick charges there. Okay, they work really well. And we've got a couple of normal 12 volt things there. And on the, there's a, one of the big Anderson plugs there for an inverter. I'll show you that a bit later on my other battery box. And over here, I've got my 40 amp DC charger. iTech World just sent me their new 40 amp DC charger. So thanks to iTech World for that. They sent me their new model, and I'll talk you through that soon. But the fantastic thing about it is that it's got the wake up thing. So if you ever flatten your battery, you don't have to take the top off and jumper start the battery to wake it up. This will do it automatically, the, the iTech Well 40 amp DC charger. So, four Anderson plugs on the end of the battery box there. I've got the fridge plugged into one. I've got the DC charger plugged into the other. And I've got two spare Anderson plugs there. So if I want to charge, um, charge the battery up via a 240 volt charger, I can just throw the Anderson plug in there. Works really well. So there's the new iTech World 40 amp. DC charger, everyone. Okay, and that's why I had to get the thicker cable down there, and it's got a 60 amp midi fuse down the other end near the starter battery. They recommend try and have your DC charger as close to your auxiliary battery, okay? Your dual battery, your auxiliary battery, whatever you want to call it. Try and have them as close as you can. And that's connected by a 8 AWG cable, nice thick cable there. Okay, so the DC charge is just plugged into this Anderson plug over here. Now the good thing about the new iTech World 40 amp charger, it can do all different sorts of batteries, gel, AGM, calcium, and LiFePo 4, which is lithium, which is what it's set to now by sitting, hitting the mode button there. You can say what type of battery you're charging. Once you set it to lithium, it stays on lithium, okay? So at the moment, it's on standby mode and it's flashing, dual of flashing lights. It means that my auxiliary battery is currently over 13.1 volts and it is because I can see on the screen it's 13.2 volts and it's sitting around 90%. So my battery's in good shape at the moment. You can also charge via solar. At the back there is a grey Anderson plug and I can plug my solar panels in there. And if I plug the solar panels in, It'll still flash on LifePo 4 there, but the solar light will come on instead of the alternator. Okay, I've just had the car running. So at the moment, it's saying, all right, um, if he starts the car up now, it'll start charging via the alternator. But if I plug the solar panels in, that light down there will come on. There's a fault light there. I haven't seen that come on yet. I don't want to see it come on. There's also a solar priority light here. So if you're, you've got a, a setup where you've got solar panels on the roof, and you want to give your solar panels on the roof of your car while you're driving along priority over the alternator, you can hit the solar priority button there and it will take green energy before it takes your alternator, okay? I don't have solar panels on the roof of this vehicle, so as soon as I start it up, it starts charging the battery. This will start charging the battery via the alternator, okay? And it can charge up to a maximum. If that battery starts getting nice and low, this will detect it and it can pump up to a maximum of 40 amps, okay? Pump up the 40 amps per hour into that battery. As the battery gets higher, 
and it's over 80 percent it won't pump in 40 amps it'll slow down and just pump in um, yeah it slows it down like you're filling up a bucket of water or whatever but if your battery's very low you can get a maximum 40 amps out of that charger now if you do buy one they do get quite hot and that is normal I've spoken to iTech world about it they don't have fans and that inside they cool by sending the heat out through the casing there so they do get quite hot that's only just warm now because but when the vehicles running that will get quite hot almost to the stage you can't put your hand on it it is quite normal don't panic if that gets hot if your cable is a getting hot then you've got to look at the thickness of your cable but I've just had nice thick cable put in there so there it is the new iTech world 40 amp DC charger so I can charge my dual battery up when I'm driving along using the alternator and when I'm camped there's a grey Anderson plug over the back there, you'll probably see I'll get in the thing. Grey Anderson plug, hook my solar panels into that and away I go. You'll see when I get over the other side, the cable now is running around into a red Anderson plug around there and that's how I charge up using the alternator. Fridge is plugged in and I keep that fridge running 24-7 guy, I like to, you know, it's hot up here during summer, when I go shopping the coals buy my meat my milk and everything i come out and i've got a nice cold fridge to throw my milk and my meat in so if i've got to go and do something else you don't want to leave your milk and meat in the car cheap spicy chicken i throw it in the fridge so i keep this running 24 7 in the bt50 especially during summertime okay and as long as i drive the bt50 enough i don't flatten the battery if that i do days where i'm not driving anywhere i'm not doing enough driving and it's a sunny day i'll throw the solar panels put the 200 watt kick ass solar panels out into the into the solar panel plug at the back there unregulated because this has got a built-in mppt solar regulator okay so it's got a solar regulator in there for those wondering the new itech world dc chargers they've got a 25 amp and a 40 amp they're ip67 which means they're waterproof so they can be mounted underneath the bonnet of a vehicle if you've got your dual battery you can put that under the bonnet guys if you're wondering going to iTech world they got a very very good downloadable um, tech manual on this item on there that tells you everything a bit that you need to know so go on to itechworld.com.au look up this item here under battery charges DC go to the 40 amp and you can download the the book there and read all about it if you want to know any further specifications about the DC charger but that's the new one and the fantastic thing is is if I ever take my oil off the ball and the fridge drains this battery and it gets down and goes into shut off mode to protect itself and closes down as soon as I turn the vehicle on this thing here will wake the battery up I don't have to take the top off and jumper start it like I used to have to with the old DC charger so you've probably seen there I've got the old mongrel Titan drawers that have been in there for many many years they're still going getting a little bit rusty but they're still doing the job for me even though these things play up a little bit every now and then but they're still going this is actually a fridge slide here so I can take the fridge slide out if I need to I don't use the fridge slide because I'm tall enough when that's up I can just undo the fridge and I can reach in and grab stuff from inside the fridge there so I rarely need to use the fridge slide there's my 40 litre angle fridge which has been an absolute fantastic fridge they're a great fridge angle aren't they really are the old case is starting to look a bit old the old Auscam pattern we'll jump in here and I'll show you the other side of the battery box as you can see the battery box is the fridge is strapped down and so is the battery box just with some cam buckle straps there's the cable coming from the starter battery out to the tub and the grey it plugs into that triple there I don't have a smart alternator guy so I don't need the ignition wire I didn't need to worry about that which is good if you've got a uh, smart alternator that's where this will come in I'm not going to even talk about that because I don't really understand it too much the black Anderson plug that cable there she's plugged into the battery box that connects the DC charger the battery box 
and there's my solar. I can plug my solar panels into there. I've got another little extension cable I might put on so I don't have to reach across. Solar panels into there, unregulated, and I can charge the battery up using solar. The only disadvantage is when I want to take the fridge slide out, because I didn't worry about making this long enough, I've got to remember to unplug this, okay? Unplug that cable, and then before I use the fridge slide. But I rarely use the fridge slide, so it's not a, not a big deal. So one of the cons of my setup, as I said, now I could have got a longer cable and maybe run it on the roof so I could, I didn't have to disconnect it. But if I do want to pull this fridge slide out, I've got to remember to disconnect that cable. It's not a big deal, guys. I've just got used to doing it if I do need to do it. And the good thing is, I took this other strap off yesterday. I've got to put it back on over here. So undo four cam buckles and my fridge come unplug the fridge from the battery the fridge comes out undo four cam buckle straps and i can take the dual battery out as well so it's a portable system which i think works really well for me i'll get up on the stool here to give you another look so that's what it looks like from and the good thing is i've got access here to the side of the vehicle from this side window the flip up window the battery box i've got turned around the correct way now which is fantastic so if I want to charge my iPhone up and my cameras or whatever when I'm out camping I can just sit them on here okay and charge up using a USB cable or whatever I want to do and it's out of the rain it's out of the the weather so I can sit the iPhone and the cameras up there overnight or whatever and it's um, it's all dry because it's inside the canopy and I've got easy access to it easy access to charging ports it works really well Battery sitting on 90%, 13.2 volts. So there you go. My dual battery setup. Let me know what you reckon. If I've left anything out, let me know. The new DC charger, happy with that so far. I love the fact that it's got the automatic wake up should, I, should my lithium battery go into safe mode. Absolute cracking idea. So as I said, generally, I don't need to use the fridge slide because undo that. Grab a water out, and if I can't reach something in the bottom, oh, that's nice. It's muggy still, eh, up here. It's not overly hot, but still muggy. If I've got beer cans and that down the bottom of the fridge and I can't quite reach, I just I jump up there and it's thing, so I don't need to use the fridge slide. The only time I use the fridge slide is when I'm actually taking the fridge and the battery box out, or I'm taking the fridge out to unstrap it and give it a clean out and give it a wipe out with some vanilla, vanilla essence and that. So always remember to do your fridge up. And inside that fridge, I've got a thermometer and it goes forward to my dashboard. I'll give you a quick look at that. The old mongrel kings, well, that's the second one I've had. The first one lasted a couple of years. They're only about 20-something bucks, $29. Tells me here, sitting in the shade at the moment and no sun, and it's nearly 31 degrees, 30.8. So it's still warm, and the sun's not even out. Fridge sitting on 3.3, absolutely fantastic. That's why I use Anderson plugs. So if you use a 12-volt plug, there's a chance they can rattle out, and it's happened to me. Just went to 3.4. When that gets to 4 degrees, the fridge starts cycling and it brings it back down to 2 point something. So it hovers between high 2s to 4 degrees, which is nice and cold. So if something happens to your fridge and you're driving along for a few hours, keep your eye on this. And if your fridge goes up to 10 degrees, you know you've got problems. You've either left the lid open, the plugs come out, or something's wrong, okay? So these are fantastic, these little fridge things. The other half goes in the fridge, the display goes on your dashboard somewhere, and um, you can keep an eye on your fridge temperature. Highly recommend that. $29 for the Kings ones. So there's different brands out there, but hey, it does the job. So I've got a separate clip on this one. This is my home, <laughs> my homemade uh, power pack. 120 amp lithium battery inside the iTech World battery box, the same one that's in the BT50. But this one here, I, thought I bought a kick ass 700 watt inverter, okay, and that's that Anderson plug on the end. What is it, 120, 
125, 128 amp, something like that. A big one, <laughs> a big Anderson plug for the inverter. So it, the kicker, the um, iTech World box had the uh, the big Anderson on there, 700 watt in case I need to use something running on 240. And that's an iTech World solar controller there. So I just plug this solar panels in there and I just charge stuff up in the shed using all the thing any anything I want to charge up 12 volt I can charge my Ryobi batteries and all that stuff I've got a 12 volt charger there to charge my 18 volt Ryobi tool batteries up I can do it all of this charge my camera gear up if I'm in the shed so I don't have to go inside charge my torches up my kick-ass torches um, charge up my camera gear all that type of stuff once again we've got all the the quick charge USBs fantastic and you can see on this end here four Anderson plugs there so I've got the fridge plugged into one the DC charger plugged into the other and I've got two spare in the car this one here I've just got the solar controller plugged in there and I run my solar panels into there unregulated into that 30 amp iTech World solar controller works really well it's got a USB thing there tells me how the battery's going so that's my shed battery box iTech World battery box and 120 amp hour battery and I've pretty well got the same setup in the BT50 except I don't have an inverter on it not that I really need it but I've got a 40 amp DC to DC charger so I can charge the battery up off the alternator while I'm driving along or via solar so there you go everyone, a quick look at my dual battery system in the BT50. Totally different to what's in the camper trailer, I've got a Red Arc stuff in there with a uh, Manager 30 and all that that came with the camper trailer. But this does the job for me, I have a portable system and for a lot of people that have utes or even your SUVs, if you've got an SUV and you don't want to keep your dual battery system permanently in there all the time, you use your SUV to take the kids and that to school during the week and then you might want to go camping and you've got a little angle fridge might pay to, um, as long as you can got a plug down the back of the SUV put a little portable battery box in there throw the angle fridge in you've got a way to keep your drinks and your food cold when you're out camping and you've got a way to um, charge your torch your phones and all that type of stuff up as well on the portable battery box works for me I've been using it for years really really happy with it really happy with it I know other people out there have got permanent setups it, it's what suits you but if you're new in the market and you're thinking about don't rush into a dual battery system have a think about it have a think about what you need if you don't need a permanent installation then maybe something like this is for you a portable battery box that you can take out when you don't need it you can take out if you want to if you lose power inside the house and you want to run some LED lights or whatever it's got a lot of advantages of having a system like this there's some cons as well okay but it's got a lot of advantages and the good thing is with the lithium battery it's nice and light you can pick it up you can move it around don't forget the discount code at iTech World over there my mates at iTech World they've been really good to me over the years guys I've bought some stuff off them they've given me some stuff as well They've always supported our charities, which I really like. They've, they've always been champions when it comes to, you know, I do a lot of stuff for charity and prize giveaways to try and raise charity money. And iTech World always come up with the goods and, and, and have given me stuff over the years to, for prize giveaways and that. So thank you to iTech World, all the guys over there. I'm coming over this year. I was going to get there last year, didn't make it. I will be in Perth this year. Because I'm going to be a granddad, I've got to go over and see my new little granddaughter when she's born down there in Bustleton. So I'd love to get into iTech World and say good day to Jordan and Jared and all the other guys in there that I've been talking to on the phone. And remember the Mr. Buck 05 discount code. Guys, I get nothing out of it. You do. So if you're looking at an iTech World item, whether it's a buddy generator, a solar generator, a JS80 jumper starter, which are fantastic bits of gear, a battery box, a dual battery system like what I've got there. Use the Mr. Buck 05, save yourself a few bucks. All right, guys, be good, take care, and we'll catch you again soon, eh? See you later.